This week on Dish with Mary, I travel to Winnipeg to dish with Tommy Schneider from Tommy's Pizzeria. We chat about his entire career, including owning multiple pizza franchises in the States, studying pizza making in San Francisco, and winning the World Pizza Championship in Naples, Italy. In 2015, he finally made his way back home where you can find him tossing pizzas in his restaurant. To me, cooking should be fun, and finding ways to make it accessible is what motivates me. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan, the smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking, and of course, taste it, even if I can't see it very well. The kitchen is my happy place. That's why I'm visiting chefs across Canada who feel the same way I do, and inviting them to cook with me in my kitchen. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Today, we've got a special guest. We've got Tommy from Tommy's Pizzeria. What are we making today? Thanks for having me, Mary. Today, we're gonna to be making our Tommy special pizza, and we're gonna be making a prosciutto pear pizza. Okay, so we've got all our ingredients portioned out, sliced up, diced up, and dough ready to go in front of us. We're ready to Where go. Where do we begin? Let's start by forming the crust. Okay. So I'm gonna go around the crust. It's gonna be laid out on the table. Okay. And then we're gonna go around with our fingers, leave about an inch on the outside, and this is gonna form the crust. I'm gonna not press too hard in the center. Okay. And Something just, what I just did. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> then we're gonna go around, and we're gonna flip it around now. And do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So leave about an inch, go around with your fingers gently, and form a crust. And now it's time to pick it up and toss it a little bit if you're up for that. I'm up for it. I don't know if it'll happen properly, <laughs> but I'm up for it. Okay. okay. So I've just, I've got it over, both draped over my draped fists. Draped over both hands. Try not to keep your fists in the center. Okay. We don't want to create a hole. So keep it out towards the outside. I'm just going to gently toss it. Toss it and catch it. And toss it and catch it and maybe give it a little spin too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit of height on that one. Yeah, you do. Okay. Up, okay. twist, yep. up and, twist. and back down. Yeah. Up, twist, back. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Nothing going on here. I got it on my hands. <laughs> okay. Now, is this too thin in the center? I think this one's about done, yeah. Okay. So it's actually stretched really nice to so a really good size. Let's put on this tray because we're going to cook it in a typical oven that you'd see in the home. Okay, this tray is fantastic. It's actually made out of paper, but it feels like those pizza trays that are perforated. Exactly. It helps cook the pizza and let it stay crunchy. Okay, so my pizza's draped over, so it's a little bigger. It's a little bigger. So you could cook this on any pizza pan as well. This is just the pan that I like to use. And I'm just moving it around a little bit to make it fit onto the tray. And why is it important to have those little bumps at the bottom or have it perforated? So that allows for the air to get underneath and keep it crispy and to keep the grease off as well. Ah, so okay, so crisp up that to dough. Crisp it out, yeah. Okay. So you've put yours, now yours is different than mine. You've put it on top of a pizza paddle. Yes. And that's gonna be used to go into where? That is gonna be going into our little pizza oven over here. Okay, so that's preheating at 565. And our other oven is preheating to 500 since that's the highest it can go. Now, okay, I'm making the Tommy special and you're making the prosciutto pear? Yes, that's correct. So let's start off by adding some spicy honey to the base of your pizza. So I am gonna do some honey mascarpone base, and I'm just gonna go around in a circle. So for, you're just using center, a squeeze bottle? Just a squeeze bottle, yeah. Okay. And we're gonna go in the circle, in the center, and then go around. Now can you Perfect. use too much of this, or? You can use too much. So I would just do one little layer, and maybe go out just a little further, to all the way to the, where the, the crust is formed. Perfect, yeah. As long as we're not on the crust, that's perfect. That looks great, so now we're ready to put some cheese on it. Okay, so let me grab yeah, this we'll grab some cheese. very large bowl of cheese. <laughs> Never yeah. enough cheese. Yeah, so I would say maybe about four, five ounces of cheese, a couple handfuls, whatever you feel like. You don't want to put too much cheese on or it won't let the crust cook properly. Okay, and do you mix your cheeses? Is it great? Can we just use a straight mozzarella, shredded mozzarella? Like, is yeah, there a percentage use, or? Yeah, I have, a, I have a blend of mozzarella that's proprietary for my pizzeria, but you can use any kind of mozzarella. At home? At home, yeah, that you can get in a grocery store. Okay. Okay, so we're just sprinkling right over top that, well, mine is the spicy honey. Yeah. And then, okay, I'll stop now, because I keep yeah, on going great. back for a little extra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's all that's gonna go on yours. I'm gonna add some toppings to my prosciutto pear pizza. What else do we got on there? So I'm gonna put some pears, freshly cut pears here. Any type of pear will do? Any type of pear will do. And in terms of amount or quantity that you're putting on top of the pizza, that's is that up to you? Is there a balance or what do you think? What do you I suggest? It's up to whatever your dough can handle. So okay. some doughs might be thinner in the center and might not be able to hold up with all the toppings on there. So I tend to go a little lighter so that it'll allow the pizza to cook properly. So I got my, my pears on there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get some caramelized onions. Oh, those look fantastic. And again, it's just a little quick handful. Yeah, just a little handful, evenly distribute it all over the pizza. And I love how creative you can get with pizzas because it's literally giving you that blank canvas yes. to work with. You can put any toppings on a pizza and there's a chance that it's gonna taste good. What's one of your favorites? This one right here? This is one of my favorites and the spicy honey as well, yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna add some pine nuts to it. Okay. These will get nice and toasted up in the oven and then mine will be ready to go. Will any nut do or is it more of a neutral based nut that you want you like to use or? I use these nuts just to go with the flavors yeah. and the texture of this pizza. And that's all we're gonna do before it goes into the oven. Everything else is done on the finish line. I'm Perfect. gonna go ahead and put mine in the oven here. It just slides right off that pizza peel. Get the oven for you. There we go. Thank right. you. There we go. And now how long does that take? Um, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. All right, we've got our pizzas in the oven. We're gonna tidy up our work surface. When we come back, we're gonna top our pizzas. Stay tuned. Dish with Mary will be right back. We now return to Dish with Mary. In the center of Winnipeg, in the heart of Canada, there's a little neighborhood with a fantastic pizza place called Tommy's Pizzeria. A few weeks ago, I came down to talk to the owner, Tommy Schneider. Okay, so this is a great place to walk. Where are we? So we're in Little Italy on Cordon Avenue in Winnipeg. And it sounds like it's pretty busy. Yeah, it's a really busy street, lots of foot traffic. We have a slice window over here too that we sell slices out of. Oh, so it works really? out great, yeah. And this is my restaurant, Tommy's Pizzeria. Why don't you come on in? I'd love to. <laughs> so we're sitting here in your restaurant, Tommy's Pizzeria. And I wanted to start at the beginning because you have such an interesting story. When did you know that you had a love for making pizza? The first time I realized I love making pizza, yeah. I was 15 years old. I was working at a place called Doughboy's Pizzeria. It's on Pamina here in Winnipeg. My friend's dad actually owned the pizzeria, so that's how I got the job. Yeah. And I just loved making pizza. Well, it didn't end there. I mean, obviously yeah. we're, in your, we're in your restaurant right now, but you've done quite a bit throughout. So I decided in my third year of university that I was gonna look at franchises to try to gain some more business experience before opening my own restaurant. What? Sorry, third year, what age would that be? Like 19? I was like 19, 20, yeah. Oh, I'm wondering where, like, I'm going that night and you're talking <laughs> about franchises. Yeah, I actually did get my first franchise when I was 20 years old, my first Papa John's Pizza franchise, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, and opened up my first location. So why Texas? It's just Papa John's kind of... Yeah, the opportunity was there. Yeah. Um, there's no winters. So I really liked that. <laughs> I wanted to get Winnipeg. out of Winnipeg's winters. Yeah. And they had an NFL teams and uh, MLB and NHL. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun. Mm. And the numbers just made sense. And it was just a really good opportunity at the time. So I had two locations by 21. Two locations. How long were you there? So I was there a total of five years and before I moved back to Winnipeg. Where did the idea for Tommy's Pizzeria come from? So I worked on it with my friend, Matt Tallman, who owns Trans Canada Brewing Company. And he just said, hey, do you want to open a restaurant inside the brewery? And I said, I would love to. And he came up with the logo. He, I was, you know, my face based on like a 50s kind of vibe, 50s kind of era. And I really like that era. So my restaurant's kind of based off of that. So when you come into Tommy's, you are the face of Tommy's. You're literally right at the front door making pizzas. Yeah. Why is that? Is that, is that strategic? Is that specifically done, designed? Well, one of the reasons is I can make sure the quality of the pizza's going out or how I like it. But the most important thing is I love making pizzas. Mm -hmm. Like I started doing it at 15. 
I, I make pizzas every day that I'm here and I never get tired of it. I love it, it makes me happy. It's like relaxing when I'm making the dough. I just love making pizzas. What do you want your customers to take away when they come into Tommy's? What experience do you want them to have? The biggest thing for me is the quality of the pizza, but also service is very important to me too. Ingredients are very important to you. Yes. Tell me about the ingredients that you choose and why you choose them. So before we opened the brewery, I had about a year to come up with the ingredients that I wanted to use, do all the research that I wanted to do. And I was able to bring in a bunch of ingredients that Canada hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy that I got to bring those in. My, my tomatoes come from Stanislaus in California, which is an amazing company. I'm really passionate about that company. Mm -hmm. My cheese comes from Galbani Cheese, and they just their quality is unreal. Let's talk about the dough. Sure. Because I just got a pizza oven yeah. last summer, and we've been experimenting. Haven't really quite finessed the dough that I uh, I enjoy right now. So it's kind of mine is a bit of uh, you know Neapolitan with a bit of structure to it. Okay. Okay. How about yours? So our dough. It's a very high gluten content. Uh -huh. We let it cold ferment for two days to let all the flavors come together. Mm. And then we let it sit out for about three, four hours before we'll use it in the restaurant. Now you're skipping something because I know you've done quite a bit of competitions. Yeah, so before opening up Timmy Tom's Pizzeria inside the brewery, I went and did a few classes with Tony Gemignani in San Francisco. He's the best pizza maker in the world. And that's where I truly found the love for making pizza, the, the ingredients is so important. I learned all about the ingredients on our trips that I go on with the World Pizza Team. And we get to see where the prosciutto is made in, in Parma, and we get to see where the Parmesan Reggiano is made and stuff like that. And there's just so many incredible experiences. You strike me as a person that doesn't see things that are impossible. You have a detached retina, and this happened when? Like three years ago. What did you notice? Yeah, what was that like? I was sitting in a restaurant, actually, and I couldn't, I was, when I was looking across at my friend, I couldn't see her face, it was blurry. And this was right before I was opening up Tommy. So I thought I was just tired, it's, you know, stressed. I'm stressed, you know, my, I'm just, it's just blurry from that. So I didn't think anything of it. I finally go to the eye doctor and they're like, oh, you need emergency surgery. I'm like, they're, oh, you're gonna be face down for three weeks. That was not what I wanted to hear, but I was right. still able to open on time and get everything done. Did you always have an eye condition or was it just? Just randomly, just randomly happened. I thought my eyes were great. I thought my right eye was actually my better eye. That's the one that had the detached retina. So how have you had to adjust for that? I completely miss the dough sometimes when I throw it in the air at the beginning. I've gotten better, I've gotten used to it. I think I can handle a little better now. But cutting pizzas, I still can't. I still can't cut a pizza properly anymore. I don't let it bother me in any way. I try my very best. And I do tell everyone as much as I can, go see the eye doctor, it's so important. Like I said, it could have been avoided if I just went to the eye doctor sooner, but I didn't think anything was wrong and now you still have minimal vision minimal in your vision. in your right. Yeah. That is an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. I'm sorry you gotta deal with it every day too. I mean, I always say I'm happier now with less sight than I've ever been. Yeah. We're not gonna let it stop us, right? No, absolutely not. Like I said, we just do it a little differently and it still gets us to the same place. Exactly. Join us after the break as we finish our pizzas with Tommy on Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. Tommy, I had such a great time at your restaurant. So much fun. So much fun. We've cleaned off all our work surface. We're getting ready to get the pizzas out of the oven. Yep, pizza's almost ready to go. I'm gonna grab it. Okay. So this one's out of the pizza oven first. Mine is still cooking in the oven? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right, if you wanna go ahead and give that a cut. And I can cut this right on top of the cutting board? Yes, you sure can. Okay, so I've got this round pizza cutter that, the, I mean, this is really easy to use. I mean, it for is, me yeah. it is because it's kind of like a palm pizza cutter. Um, so I just kind of chop it, roll it along. Yeah. Spin. Now, the, I mean, little known fact, I can't cut pizza very well. So, <laughs> so the fact that I'm doing this right now it's um, That's normal, perfect. We'll typically like that. this would separate. Yes. Right? But because I'm not that great with that <laughs> pizza cutter, we're gonna move to a pair we'll of scissors. So pizza scissors, what's cool about these ones is uh, that they have a guard at the bottom. 
Right. And the guard can rest right on top of the cutting board because one, I can't even get it straight if I wanted to. <laughs> and then you just slide it right underneath, snip, snip, and you just keep that on cutting all easy, the way yeah. through, right? There so you get your, your slice. Yeah. And these are great because you could pick these up anywhere. And there's your slice of pizza. Perfect. So why do we cut it before we put the rest of the ingredients on? So we cut it before so that the toppings don't all fall off when we cut it and they don't get all squished. So we'll put, okay. we'll top the pizza after, nothing will fall off. <gasps> Thanks for moving those slices onto the plate. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so now we've got all our ingredients, our toppings. So I'm gonna start by putting some prosciutto on. Okay. If you wanna help me do that. We're just using our hands? Yeah, we're just gonna use our hands. Oh, I love that they're separated with the little parchment paper in between, because it makes it easier to grab. Yeah, and it keeps it fresh too this and I am, <laughs> dumb. I'm doubling up on the prosciutto. Are we just tearing? Yeah, we can just tear it, place it however you want. I like to get, you know, some on every slice so you can enjoy it. Now, does it matter if I just roll it up or do you want it flat? You can honestly put it however you like. I think this looks great. Perfect. Let's move on to some arugula. <gasps> We've got some fresh arugula in the bowl fresh here. fresh arugula. Using our hands, just gonna sprinkle yeah. that right over top, right? Yeah. There we go. Wonderful, okay. Next. So now let's get some gorgonzola. Put some gorgonzola cheese on. Now, gorgonzola, can we use, if someone's really not a fan of gorgonzola, would you say this could be substituted for? I would substitute it for maybe some Parmesan Reggiano. Ooh, that's nice too. That could be good too. Something sharp, I guess, or salty? Yeah. That'll just go well with all the flavors that we have on this pizza. Okay. As little or? As much as you would like, yeah. And this is my That's kind good. of cooking. I could use my hands to tear everything apart. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put some balsamic reduction on. And you're using a squeeze bottle. Just the same way we did the spicy honey. We just go in a circle like that if you wanna give it a try. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Love that. So now we're gonna put some honey. I like to start by putting it on the crust and then I go in the middle as well with some honey. Just okay, very... how about you do this okay, one? Okay, sounds good. And again, using a squeeze bottle. And there it is. Now when you say hot honey, it's just a little bit spicy. It's got that sweet and spicy element to it. Yes, that's correct. And when added with the salt and the bread. Yeah, just goes all really well It's like a really party well in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's that one. I'm gonna check on yours. Okay, I will put this pizza to the side so we can get the other one in front of us. I wanna say this is a masterpiece, but it could just be that because it's my pizza. Yeah, I think it's good to go. Here and we can cut it. So my crust is a little puffy. Is that okay? That is okay, yeah. I think it looks great. Are we cutting again? Yeah, we can go ahead and cut again. Yeah, I think the scissors worked really well, so let's yeah, use those. Yeah, I think it's just easier for me to kind of yeah. slide it under. It's a little warm. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it just came out of the oven. So you were saying you as well, when you go to cut? Yeah, I usually have someone else cut it for me because- Yeah, I just hacked at this. That's that was why. actually pretty good. Not That's bad? pretty even, yeah. Every time I don't cut it even. Yeah, I just, yeah. I found that with the less vision, yeah. um, it's difficult to to figure out one where the center is and two go straight exactly like this is definitely not the center and I'm hacking at it but I think it's all great. going down I think it's great okay okay so this is ours Tommy special the spicy honey okay so now you're plating that what's next so let's go ahead and put some prosciutto on this one as well okay. I'll tear that up what else goes on here so we're also going to put some burrata on as well. And burrata is a soft, fresh cheese, correct? Yeah. Tear that up right over top. Make sure every piece has some prosciutto. Yeah, okay, that should be enough. I'm going to go ahead and do the burrata. I do the same thing. I put a little bit of bigger clumps, but I like to make sure I get some in every bite if I can. Oh yeah, you're being generous. Like you're, you're putting about like a teaspoon, if not a little more. I would say that, at least yeah. a teaspoon. Of a piece. On each slice and then a little more as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now 
we can go ahead and put some arugula on there. A little fresh arugula, that's my job. You notice how I handed off the little messier cheese thing to you. <laughs> I do it every day, it's no problem. <laughs> I just thought knowing me, I would probably wear half of that. <laughs> All right, that looks great. Now, if you want to grab the zester over there, we're going to zest some lemon onto it. Okay. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, if you after, want. After yeah. I take it out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just... It's, yeah, I would say that's enough. That's perfect. And we're just using a little bit of lemon zest. Yeah, just a little bit. And then I do the same thing with the spicy honey. I go all around the crust. Would you like me to do that? Yes, yes. Okay. So I go around the crust. And then I do another little bit on the inside. And there you have it. That's the Tommy special. Well, I can't wait to dig in. So why don't we take these over to the table, sit down and get ready to eat. That sounds great, let's do that. If you're interested in making either of Tommy's pizzas, you can find the full recipes on our website at ami.ca slash dish dash recipes. Thank you so much, Tommy, for coming, sharing your recipe with us. I can't wait to dig in. It was so amazing. Thanks so much for having me. And for you at home, thank you for watching. Until next time on another episode of Dish with Mary. Want to dig in? Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Production services provided by Frank Digital. Hosted by me, Mary Mammolini. Guest chef, Tommy Schneider. Producers, Chris McIver, Libby Lee. Director, Chris McIver. Director of photography, Braden Music. Food stylist, Amanda Bebo. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated described video consultant, M. Williams. Supervising producer, Michelle Dudas. Copyright 2023. An AMI original production.